I'm glad that I learned that lesson at, you know, 25 instead of 55, where, you know, a lot of people, they think that they have to be something that they're not for their entire life just to find out that they could have just been themselves and yeah. leverage the things that they were already good at and leaned in on those things. And yeah. I think that's one of the things that a lot of people do is they try to be, be something they're not and they try to work on the things that they're really bad at. And it's like, I'd rather like people work on the things they're already naturally good at and become great at those things and you know the things that they're bad at become like maybe mediocrely good hey guys welcome to that's not my job podcast with cody barton and pace morby two amazing partners a good mixture between visionary and integrator um we're just coming off of actually a business purchase recently and we've got a couple in the pipeline as well Maybe we can talk a lot about that, but um, I think a lot of people need to be watching this podcast. I think it's like the number one podcast that business entrepreneurs need to watch because they're all going out there trying to do everything solo dolo. Mm -hmm. They're trying to be visionary and integrator. Yeah. And I was texting you a couple of days ago, like my dad comes over to my house, mm -hmm. you know, five, five years ago before I met you, my, my dad comes to me and goes, Hey, I need to borrow 1500 bucks. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, okay, well, what about the other $400,000 you owe me? Like, when's that going to get paid back? Yeah. And I'm like, all right, I'll give you 1500 bucks, but here's the deal. The deal is I give you the 1500. It's not a loan. And I forgive all the other 400,000 you owe me. Mm -hmm. And what I want in return is for you to never ask me for money again. Mm -hmm. He's like, done. He was like, so desperate the, for the 1500 bucks, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah. Why am I so comfortable bringing this up about my father? Well, guess what? If my dad was going to watch an integrator podcast, he wouldn't be asking me for money. Okay. So I feel comfortable saying this stuff. Okay. Yeah. So then a couple of days ago, five years later, fast forward five years later, I'm mm -hmm. about to do a, a zoom. I'm trying to do my workout in the backyard, hanging out with the girls, kind of mixing, mixing both life and work balance. I'm doing push ups. I'm doing, you know, lunges. I'm doing um, all this stuff. And my wife pops her head out and she goes, Hey, your dad's going to come over and visit the kids. I'm like, no, he's not. He's going to come over here and ask me for a job or he's going to ask me for money. And by the way, this is a perfectly intelligent human being. My dad is incredibly smart, mm -hmm. but there's a point to me bringing this up and it's for the audience. So my dad comes over and I'm like, my, my wife, go, I go, no, he's not. She says, well, don't worry. I'll protect him. For, I'll protect you from him. I'll kind of play interference and I'll keep him in the kitchen. You can finish your workout, hang out with the kids, and then you can sneak downstairs and do your Zoom. I'm like, great. Oh man, my dad wasn't about to let that happen. He, it was like, he could see what was happening and I was trying to get and squeeze around him. So he just ran right up to me without any <laughs> foreplay whatsoever. <laughs> he goes right up to me and he's like, I need some money. Oh my God. Oh my <laughs> gosh. It's like some, it's like some <laughs> dude in a bar goes right up to a girl. You're hot. Oh my gosh. <laughs> like there's no foreplay. There's no compliments. There's no, no nothing. And he says, I need some money. I need some help. I need some money. And I was like, all right. I text Tony and my dad together and I say, hey, Tony, this is my dad. He needs, a, he needs money. This is not a loan. This is a gift. And in the future, please don't let me say yes to my own family and friends. Lo there's no money coming out of my pocket. This is the last time. Just mm -hmm. so my dad didn't feel like he could come back to me. Mm -hmm. And when I really thought, think about this and the lack of what's going on, like my father, like yours, Works incredibly hard, super mm -hmm. smart, great father, everything. Mm -hmm. But why is my dad 65 years old and still running his business as a solopreneur? And he also thinks he is an entrepreneur. And I'm, I would argue the opposite. I would say, if I want to be a really, really aggressive, I would say people that are running a business on their own are not running a business. They're running a hobby. Yeah. It's a hobby. Like a business to me is a business that you could take off to Iceland for two weeks. Yeah. Do an hour of work every day, two hours of work maybe. You come back home and there's more money in the bank than there was when you came home, when you left. Right, right, right. That's a business. And I would say, I don't know if your dad's going to watch this, but I, I'm not going to get into your stuff. But I can tell you, my dad's never owned a business. If that's the case, my dad has only had a hobby, and that hobby has made him some money along the way. Yeah. No savings, no investments, no nothing. And the biggest reason for that. The biggest reason for that, there's two big reasons, but it's one reason that leads to the second reason. You said this on stage just recently. I don't know if you're going to, you'll probably end up putting that on YouTube. Yeah. Your, your talk in community camp was so good. And you basically just said, look, your personal income will never go past your personal development. Yep. And so 
that is the number one reason why my dad at 65, whatever years old he is, is asking his son for the 500th thousandth dollar that I've given my father. And he will abruptly lie and act as if he's coming to visit my kids, but he's really asking me for 10,000 bucks. Mm -hmm. It's because of the lack of personal development on his side. Mm -hmm. That personal development, that's number one, would have led to him understanding that he should have had an integrator partner or hired out integrations in his business a long time ago and turn into a business that thrives and does not rely on him, that doesn't wear him out because my father goes through this a lot. Yeah. He goes up, Ebbs gets and flows. burned out, ebbs and flows, mm -hmm. right? And so that's really what this podcast is about is like, dude, you need to be telling people that's not my job. That's yep. either your job or I need to hire somebody to do that job. Yeah. And, and it's interesting because, you know, you told me about, you know, you came up with the name of the podcast, you know, for me. And, you know, we talked about, you know, having me do this for the last, you know, year finally, you know, was like, all right, this needs to happen. You know, this, the conversations need to be had because there's a lot of people that talk about and, you know, around marketing, they talk about sales, they talk about the vision and like, you know, being a visionary. And that's, you know, what, most of the content comes from those types of people out there, but there's that, you know, silent majority of people that are around, you know, hanging around that aren't making that type of content to be able to support the integrators or the people that, you know, can team up or plug in with, you know, visionaries and being able to, you know, take that vision to, you know, higher levels um, yeah. that they wouldn't be able to do on their own, you know, either, either side, you know, it's, it's so it's, it truly is the unspoken truth of this, this entire industry. It's the invisible items. And it is ironic. The people that are the most important people in the business are also the most silent. Mm -hmm. And so from the outside perception, the outside world is looking at it like, Oh, I want to be Pace Morby. No, you don't. No, you don't. Cause you'll be a solopreneur. If you're just a Pace Morby, right? You need a Cody Barton. You need other people. You need a Ben, like our CFO. Like yeah. even inter this is the funny thing is even integrators need integrators. Yes, hundred yes, percent. Like you, when you found Ben, our, our CFO, it was like, I watched all these things not only come off your plate that you were doing, but also things that we should have been doing for a couple of years were now magically being done yep. and being done at a higher level where we all of a sudden you hire the right person it opens up 15 doors that you didn't know were possible because mm -hmm. the universe is like, Oh, you're, you're serious about this. Yeah. I'm going to put things in your path that is going to, you know, come down, down the, like the plant guy a company we just recently purchased. Yep. That opportunity doesn't come along if you didn't get Ben into the company. Oh, us trying to go through the financials of that business. I would have been uh, not, not even, not even that, I mean, just... not even that. This is my, <laughs> this is my point that people need to understand. As a visionary, right, I've got certain roles and responsibility. I think you and I are such a good match that I know my job really well that you yeah. don't ever have to worry about like, is Pace doing what he's supposed to be doing? In fact, I'm the opposite. I'm like bringing so many things. You're like, dude, slow down, slow down. And you do your job incredibly well that I don't have to wonder whether you're doing your job or not. You know, you have to coach me along like, hey, you're doing this a little bit weird. Hey, make sure you pay attention to this. Hey, da, da, da. I have to do some of that on my own to you like, hey. Let's go a little faster. Let's yeah. raise the this. Let's do the that. Hey, will you look at this person not doing their job, whatever, yeah. right? And redirecting what's most important at the time. Right. You know? But here's the thing that a lot of people don't understand. The universe is a real thing. As stupid as it is, as stupid as it sounds, as like hokey as it is, I'm going to sound like Ed Milet or Dean Graziosi for a minute. The opportunity of the plant guy or mm -hmm. maybe the plumbing company that Alexis has recently found, mm -hmm. those would not have even been opportunities ever like yeah. you, you might be thinking oh the opportunity would have come to us but we wouldn't have been ready for it no i'm saying <laughs> the opportunity would have never came to us because what happens is the universe delivers to you what it knows you're ready for mm. right and it's the same thing with like our website at manifestu.com like once we actually put a solid website up all of a sudden we started getting really good at candidates right yeah. oh what the heck we got a good graphic <laughs> designer we got is it? right so the you doing your job also uh, amplifies the visionary's ability to go do his job and vice versa. It's a cycle that ha it's a, it's basically the recycle effect of like, because you hired Ben a year ago, mm -hmm. the laws of the universe were set in motion to then have somebody refer the plant guy to us. And then me going, I think we could take this on. Let's negotiate it. Boom, boom, boom. Going to you. Ben saying, let me look through the financials. Then it became an opportunity. Yes. 
if yes. Ben wasn't hired, if you didn't find Ben, the plant guy would have never even been a referral. Somebody would have, wouldn't have felt the urge to then go, here you go. Yeah. It's the ripple effect. hundred percent. So people go, how do you guys get all these opportunities? Well, because we understand integrator visionary. We understand that's not my job. We didn't originally though. No. You know, and like when you, when you and I first met, going back to the vision, like the whole entire industry is all about, go be a visionary, go be an yeah. RJ Bates, go be a yeah. Sam Singh, go be a Kihano, go be a Alexis Morgan, go be a Abraham Gray. It's like, yeah. no, you don't be any of those people. They're the worst. <laughs> don't, don't be a Pace Morby. So even you, when you got into the industry thought, that's who I have to be. It's like That's what you have to do. You read, you know, it's like you read Grant Cardone's books. It's like 10 X you have to sell. You need to be a closer. You know, like that's like the, that is what all the content is out there. Like you're not finding content. That's like, Hey, like there's all of these other things that businesses actually need that, you know, there's certain skill sets that people have that they think they're lacking the skills when they really have the skills to do what's needed to help a business succeed. Yeah. It's like, People look at a, a house and they get so fixated on a nice f fancy door, like a nice, really beautiful front door, right? Mm -hmm. I want this beautiful front door. Okay, well, what happens when you pass that door is the rest of the house. Mm -hmm. And so you look at a visionary, it's like the visionary, yeah, it might be the shiny object on the front of the thing, but once you open it, that house has to be full of other things. It has to have furniture and rooms and flow and all that kind of stuff. That's integration, that's systems, that's teams. Yep. So I look at... Anybody I now look up to, the immediate thought I now have, this is since you and I have linked in as partners and really understood the dynamic of how powerful a Cody and a Pace together can be. I go to like Dan Fleischman mm -hmm. and I'm like, but who's running the shit? Yeah, who's doing all the stuff? <laughs> who's actually making this work? It's Leon, Le Leon his brother. Yeah. His, his brother Leon is his integrator mm -hmm. and he's his Cody Barton and he's making it all work, mm -hmm. right? You go to Grant Cardone's office, it's Shelly. Mm -hmm. It's the people on in the, in the scenes creating the culture and managing the thing and putting the systems in place and giving the employees direction and actually not spoiling people. Or be, There's so many things visionaries just screw up. <laughs> it's so hard. It's so hard. <laughs> it's so hard. So where was it for you? Like in Maybe it was our relationship. Maybe it was the second year in our relationship. Where was it for you where you woke up and you go, Holy shit, I'm full integrator, dude. Like I'm I'm the missing link to this entire operation. I mean, I, I think it was, you know, after about, you know, I feel like the first year, you know, we we had like friction points of like because we were, you overlap. know, kind of we were over we had some overlaps yeah. still in that first year. And so, you know, I think once it, we got through like the first year working together and really kind of like, all right, where are we sitting and what lanes do we stay in? And like these are the areas that we run in and obviously collaborate on ideas and in each of our lanes. But, you know, after about a year, it was like, well, you know, these the areas that I need to just stay focused in are, you know, over here on like the leads and the marketing and, you know, the operations, the system systems, like managing the team, growing the team, like those are the areas that I needed to focus on. And so, you know, it really took about a year to, to understand that. And what's interesting is, you know, I'm glad that I learned that lesson at, you know, 25 instead of 55, where, you know, a lot of people, they think that they have to be something that they're not for their entire life, just to find out that they didn't ever they could have just been themselves and yeah. leveraged the things that they were already good at and leaned in on those things. And yeah. I think that's one of the things that a lot of people do is they try to be, be something they're not and they try to work on the things that they're really bad at. And it's like, I'd rather like people work on the things they're already naturally good at and become great at those things and become, you know, the things that they're bad at become like maybe mediocrely good. It's like, why yeah. not just lean in on the strengths and go all in on those things? Yeah. Like I, to give some context for people watching when you and I first linked in together, I was doing what, what I was doing is making, I was making probably half a million dollars a year in my wholesale business, just me, my wife. And before it was me and my wife, it was just me. Yeah. So I was getting leads coming in yeah, and I was like, this, I'm like, this is easy for me. I go on appointments. I close the deal. Somebody is going to deal with it yeah, and we're going to sell the deal. What I was doing <laughs> is I was leveraging Jamil and Keegley as my yeah. integrator for a long time. Yeah. Right. Like I didn't know that then, mm -hmm. right. I didn't know I was leveraging them as an integrator, the person that was doing the back end, so I could do my job. I was just like, I thought of it as I don't have time mm 
Mm-hmm. So I just, I'll let you make some money. That was yeah. my, that was my description of the process Yeah. in my, my own narrative was I don't have time. Therefore I'm going to let somebody else do this who has time. Mm-hmm. Not, this is not what I'm specifically good at. I'm going to find somebody who is specifically good at this thing. Yeah. Yeah. That was the wrong narrative. Yeah. So when you and I link in together, you reach out to me off a podcast and you're like, will you help me close? Will you help me close these deals and show me how you're closing deals? Mm-hmm which is funny because if you could go back and ask that question again, you would say, hey, I'm hella good at generating leads and running systems. You're good at closing the deals. I'll keep running the systems and generating the leads if you just wanna go close all the deals. Yeah. But your question was actually, will you show me how to close the deals? Yeah, 100%. Which, made, <laughs> which, which if you could go back and remember this, knowing what you now know, you are like, no, I wasn't meant to be the guy that was out doing the stupid barbarian stuff and trying to close deals all the time. No, I mean, it, not it, that you can't. Yeah, yeah. It's not that you can't because you were doing deals before me. Yeah. It's just, what are you exceptional at? Yeah. And excited to do every day too. I think that's an important part because anyone could do something that they hate to do or don't like to do for a time. But eventually, I think that's where burnout really comes from is like working on something you don't enjoy doing versus, you know, doing the things that you love to do that it doesn't feel like work. Yeah. And like looking at, we could deep dive into some of these transitions, like where these key moments were, because I think the audience would be super curious to this, but like fast forward now, five years, 2023 going into 2024, like, bro, by the way, Christmas is in like three hours, just so you know. Okay. (laughs) So, um, we're, let's just say it's 2024. Basically it is. So, um, we recently purchased a company, 50% Mm -hmm. of it. Mm -hmm. And what was interesting is I'm, I'm traveling, speaking on stage and I get this opportunity and I'm in a hotel room negotiating with the the owner of this business and I'm feeling I'm in my moment. Yeah. And I'm I'm sitting here going, Oh, I love this. This is so great. Extract, 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 take this as ammunition, feed it back in, negotiate the deal, blah, 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 pass it on. Right. Mm -hmm. And then what's so cool is that you send me a text message and guys, this is why I'm saying all of this to give you context. When Cody says, find what you're uniquely good at or what you're excited about, this is what I'm, I'm trying to give you very specific answers to what that is. So Cody sends me a text message, I don't know, three weeks ago, and he sends me a screenshot of him in a Zoom with this new business that we just bought. <clears throat> the person that we bought it from mm-hmm. and his operator, his girl, um, yeah. Christine, and you on the screen and you go, I, this is my life's purpose. Yeah. I'm sitting on a zoom, pulling relief and stress or putting relief on them and pulling stress off of them. And I'm changing people's lives by bringing my unique skill to this that I'm also super pumped and excited about doing. Yeah. Yeah. Like those are those moments that like, all the other bullshit you have to deal with. It's kind of like golf. Like you go, go take a hundred shots and go playing golf. <laughs> But there's this one moment that you had this beautiful shot and you're like, I'm coming back for the rest of my life. <laughs> so like that beautiful moment for you, I, I it may, gave me chills the other day watching you. And I was just like, I'm so proud of you, dude. Like, you're so awesome. I, I, that's not what gives me joy. What gives me joy is watching you find joy in that moment. Mm-hmm. And I just was so proud of you in that moment of like, think about the personal development it took for you to get to that point. Yeah. Because think about two three, four years ago, could you have been able, would you have been able to have had that same meeting? Oh, no, absolutely not. I mean, there is so much, so much learning that had to happen over the last few years to be even prepared to be able to do what we're doing. I mean, if we tried to do what we're doing right now, three, four years ago, not, it wouldn't, wouldn't be happening. It would crumble. It would would be an idea that burned and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. A lot of stuff that we did for the first couple of years was like building confidence and trust with each other. Mm-hmm. That also is probably what we did in the first year was like bumped into each other, scraped shins, communication styles. Mm-hmm. Hey, when Pace is doing these weird things over here, you know, there was moments where like I go out and I do a thing and then you call me, you're like, dude, what are you doing? One of our team members said you did this, this, and this. Now, when I do weird things, you're like, nope, there's always a reason that he's doing this. <laughs> And yeah. when he explains it to me, so now the message is, hey, when you get a moment, can you tell me why you're doing these things? Mm-hmm. And you're so much more calm about it. And I tell you, go, oh, dude, this is, okay, great. Love it. I'll tell the team. Yeah. Right? So, but in the beginning, it was like, why the hell is this guy doing this? He's causing <laughs> chaos. He's doing this and this is. So it's like the first part of having a partnership, which I think my father could never overcome. 
Yeah. And I don't know, I don't know much about your father other than I know he's a great guy. I love your mom. So like I, they're amazing people, but I look at my dad and I'm like, that was the hardest thing for him to never, he could never overcome was that first year with a partner mm -hmm. that required patience Yeah, to go, I'm going to figure this person out and we're going to find out how we mold. You know what my dad did is my dad did what I did, which was find the mirror image of himself. Mm -hmm. So it's like two visionaries just trying to go to battle yeah. all day long. And so, you know, you were a massive blessing in my life. But here's the question. How do other people find a Cody? Are there other Cody's out there? Yeah. Are they just quiet? Are there the equal? Is there an equal amount of Cody's as there are of paces? Mm -hmm. I don't know. And, you know, the thing about it is I think there's a lot of people out there that, you know, could be in a similar similar place like you know where they are like a cody and that's where you know the foundation of this podcast is to try to reach more of those people and then for maybe visionaries when they meet an integrator to send them to to listen to what we're talking about here but i think the thing is is you know most of the time not all the time but most of the time the introverts are typically more introverted you know they're usually more shy like thinking of going to meetups, I'm like, how could I just go and hide in a corner yeah, and how do I say you know, hi and then leave? Hi and then Irish goodbye. And yeah. like, I just disappear. Like that's yeah. like you an know, Irish hello and an Irish goodbye. <laughs> walk in the room and kind of <laughs> look around and then walk out. So you get, so you get somebody, Cody, why didn't you come? I was, I was there. there. Ask Tom. Yeah. You see the Instagram post? <laughs> <laughs> I showed up. Uh, you know, so it's like, I think that, you know, there, there's a big chunk of them that are in that, you know, similar area. And so, you know, I think, um, you know, like we've talked about, uh, you know, later, later this year, you know, looking at putting together like an integrator Academy to create a community for these people, because there's not really any great, com like literally we go to events, people are talking they're like, how do we find, you know, how could I send my integrator to something or how can I find my operations person to find a community that they actually can and feel like they can, you know, grow within a network and have like their people. Yeah. And there really isn't. It's just like, ah, well, here's some good book recommendations, but you know, good luck with and finding I, a community. I, I think it's also <laughs> two parts too. It's like the part, part number one is helping people find the people that know their integrators. Yeah. But what about the people that are closet integrators like you? <laughs> like you didn't know you were an integrator. One, yeah. A lot of people don't know what an integrator is until yeah. they read like rocket fuel or yeah. whatever. But you also had to identify, almost self-identify yeah. in a weird way of like, wait, hold on. Through reading books and educating yourself and going the long way, you had to pull yourself out of the closet and go, wait, hold on. Not only is it okay that I'm a closet integrator, mm -hmm. it's okay for me to just go out and tell everybody I'm an integrator because of how powerful this position is. Yeah, Because I think in the beginning, people think, oh, the visionaries are the cool people. No, dude, they're not. Because the second we come up with a business idea, What's the next question after it? Who's going to run it? Who's going to do the things and do the buttons? Great and idea, all that, but all who's going to yeah. run it? Yeah. Right? And um, so it's like helping people get educated on identifying that you are an integrator and that it's okay to talk about being an integrator because you are actually the foundation of every business. And then secondly, how do you gravitate and, and magnetize those people into that, basically that academy? Mm -hmm. Are you thinking about helping visionaries like, an Abraham Gray find some more integrators to this? A hundred percent. Cause the thing that we, that we have to think about is like, you know, there's visionaries, integrators, right. But like, doesn't mean all of the, either of those people are necessarily always entrepreneurs. Mm. Some of those people can be great entrepreneurs. You know, you look at someone on our team, like Giselle, she phenomenal entrepreneur Very doesn't, much, yeah. doesn't want to be an entrepreneur. Doesn't want to have the risk and the stress of having her own business crushes it on our team does an amazing job and you know is going to i mean she makes great money but she has an even bigger opportunity to make even more without she, the headaches. she has a lot of time freedom right because here, here's people asked me the other day what's an entrepreneur i'd love to hear your explanation of this yeah entrepreneur to me is somebody who's inside of your business who owns a segment of your business right mm -hmm. like giselle owns a, div a yeah. division yep like nobody's messing with her. Nobody's messing with like yeah. her thought process. She even adds vision to it. Yep. She then figures out how to get the integration added. What is your thought of what an entrepreneur is? I think an entrepreneur is somebody that they have the ambition of, I want to create something amazing. I want to make a difference. I want to make an impact in a big way, but 
I am don't want to have to do everything. Maybe the the entrepreneur is like, I love running operations in a business, or I love running marketing. Like I, my love is marketing, or whatever that individual thing is, usually in a business. And it's someone that they want to plug into someone else's ecosystem where it doesn't the the entire foundation doesn't rest on their shoulders. You know, they are able to you know stand up and work in that specific area of a business and they get to have their own unique ideas. They get to bring their vision within the business to life without all the stress and heartache and headache of dealing with everything that goes into just being a business, you know, and that's, I think that's where, you know, we've seen different people come in to work for our companies that have, they've started their own businesses and they end up coming and working for us because they're like, you know, I really love marketing or I really love this, or I really loved being a video editor. And when I had my own business, I realized I had to be a marketer. I need to be a salesperson. I need to manage my money right. I need to be a bookkeeper. I need to do all of these Ch- things. Chase down money. Yeah, I got to go chase do the estimates. You know, yeah, land deals. Yeah, and and you know figure out all of that, and then be the technician of the thing that they're doing. Instead, yeah. they you know what I find within just a lot of people that come to work for our company is they they love doing the thing, and they could be in an ecosystem and in an environment where they get to work on what they're passionate about without all of the other stuff, and they still can make great money. Because you know it, it's funny because. I know, uh, you know, we've talked about this, but it's like a lot of people, they get into business and they're like, I want to make a hundred grand a year. So they're like, I need to do a, a you know, a hundred grand a year in revenue or 150 grand. It's like, well, what is your profit going to actually be? Yeah. Like people don't really realize how much revenue you have to do to take home a hundred grand a year or 200 grand a year or 500 grand a year, yeah. you know? And so I think, you know, that, that entrepreneurs is a person that, you know, realizes they don't want to deal with all of that, but they want to do that thing and be in an ecosystem that they align with. Yeah. And also I think, you know, you, you mentioned the uh, stress part of it and the anxiety they can hang their They can hang up the work at the office and go home. Yeah. In fact, there's like, I feel when I text you at three o'clock in the morning or eight o'clock on a Sunday night, I don't worry about it because you live, breathe and, you know, eat yeah, everything yeah. in this business. Yeah. We're partners. Yeah. And so if I have a grievance or a this or not a grievance with you, but like something going on. Yeah. With Giselle, I'm like, oh crap, she's on a, she's on a cruise right now. I don't mm-hmm. want to bother her for four days. Yeah. So like there's some lines in the sand that say, look, I'm inside the business, but mm-hmm. I don't. I don't need to shoulder all the burden. Yeah. I want to have that work life balance. Yeah. I think a lot of entrepreneurs <laughs> like you and I, we can find work life balance, but even at our desire, like here, we found work life balance in a lot of our businesses. Yeah. But the problem is we're addicted to doing more, creating more things and like, all right, we have a little bit of free time. What, what else can we create or yeah. do? <laughs> or actually, it's the other way around. It's like, let's go find another opportunity that will force us to find free time. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Our existing exactly 50, 60, 70 hour week. <laughs> we're at 70 hours this week. Let's go find another business that's going to take 20 hours. So it forces us to take 20 hours off and then delegate it. That's yes. usually the way it actually happens. Yeah. That's very true. Right. So, which is actually a good thing, like putting that pressure and stress on yourself. So, in the first year of our transition, were there key books, were there key podcasts, were there masterminds you were going to? What were the moments where you're like, okay, I am journeying, I am going down this path, this journey on my own to figure out how to be such an exceptional integrator. Mm-hmm. But what what were some resources that you utilized to ultimately become the Cody Barton of 2024? I mean, in the, in the beginning phases, I mean, I found, you know, there's a specific author, which he's the author of Profit First, Mike Michalowicz. He, you know, he has a few other books, a book called The Pumpkin Plan, uh, one called Fix This Next. Um, and so he had, you know, he had a few different books that were all around really like building like the infrastructure for a business. And those were those books were really, really helpful from like the infrastructure around like managing company finances in the right way to managing like the actual like, you know, ecosystem of how the operations should be running. And so, you know, I feel the the first, you know, couple years, there's a lot of technical things. And now really the last, you know, couple years has been around, you know, uh, really honing in on the people side. Leadership. Yeah. Leadership has been. Managing expectations. Yes. When somebody asks you for a raise every 90 days, how do you handle that? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. These are. That doesn't happen anymore. (laughs) Well, because you have you have good things. You have good things you put in place. Yeah. Yeah. It's like you. Isn't that funny? We used to we used to have all these people ask for raises all the time. Or, Constantly. But there's a way to solve that. <laughs> yes. 
expectations. <laughs> so crazy, dude. And what's funny and ironic is like as a visionary or even a business owner that doesn't have this structure, like even as an integrator, you're like, yeah. I want to make you happy. So I assume the way to make you happy is to give you another raise. Yeah. But what you learn is that actually sours them and poisons them. Mm -hmm. And they're actually less happy in that structure than they are with an expectation of, well, here's how you get to that next raise. Yeah. Yeah. People don't, people want to know where they can go within the organization. And so like, that's one of like right now, like that's a, you know, I just rolled this out for one of our companies literally yesterday, like sent it out to all of the, everyone uh, at the company. And you know, this is a employee maturity model. And so essentially <clears throat> it, employee it, maturity model, that's something a, a visionary will never let out of their mouth <laughs> an, an employee maturity model. <laughs> Oh so, my gosh. So it's very exciting stuff. But, you know, from ba basically what it does, though, is, you know, when people come into a business and they come in, you know, to whatever job they're going to be working, they most of the time, like they people want to be able to work at the same company for years if they are, you know, hired the right way and they go through the right process. And so what we're doing with this model is really being able to show our team members, you know, what does it look like today and what could it look like years from now? And so, you know, one of one of the things like just taking one role, for example, we have, you know, from an entry level operations role, operations coordinator to operations manager to director of operations to senior director director to vice president da, 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 all the way up to coo so it's do like we have all those people who do we have we we don't even have up to all those people we have up to a director of operations um so what would be the next person to hire uh so the thing in is that, in that chain in in that specific chain probably i mean depending on the company but you know maybe a senior director of operations um you know the 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 model is being able to show the people that are at maybe an operations coordinator or an operations manager, how do they like, what are the steps look like and what is the income potential that they could earn? And who do they have to become per, in a personal development stat, standpoint to become that person? Yes. And so basically I wrote it out in what I want to see in those people. So for somebody to go from say it's director of operations, they could see senior director of operations. What is the compensation range look like? But then what are the competencies? Who do they need to become? And it's listed out. Literally, I have in an Excel sheet, there's like 52 or 53 competencies of like, this is what you have to operate like. Here are books you have had yeah. to have read. Here are concepts you must have down to even qualify for a conversation of potentially getting this role. Damn. So it's, but it's showing the path. There's no ambiguity of like, what is my career path look like here? How could I create my dreams within a company from Pace and Cody? Imagine if everybody did that with like everybody they dated, they married, they <laughs> partnered with, like, you know, I don't know. I'm sure at some point you'll have, you'll create for the Integrator Academy, you'll create like, here's the checklist for you to bring on a visionary partner. Like make sure you're bringing these things to the table. Yeah. Right. And these are the attributes you should be working on. And even if you don't have them, you should be working on them. Yeah. Right. These, I call them the merit badges, the micro talents that you have to acquire. Mm, yeah. Whether it's reading a book or going through a thing to yeah. gain that experience. Right. Mm -hmm. um, okay. So in that first year reading books, yeah. right. Mike McCall, how do you say the last uh, name? Mike McCallowick. So I don't even know if I'm saying it right, but. Okay. So, um, <laughs> I touch those books and I, I break out in hives. <laughs> One book, I, he did he read Rocket Fuel or write Rocket Fuel? Uh, and that's Gino Wickman. That book I've read five times. Great book. I think it resonated with me because it was what I was going through. Yeah. Uh, I, what, it's, what, it's why I had I torched four or five relationships before you. And for people that might not even know, we got a live audience, by the way. We've got uh, some pretty badass people in here. Chris Cinematic. Kevin Cho, Abraham Gray, Alexis Morgan, and uh, Chris's future wife in here. Marry her, just so you know. Okay. <laughs> so I had torched relationships based on hiring or bringing on a visionary that was just like me. Like, oh, two, two closers? Yeah. Oh, this company's going to blow up. <laughs> closer squared, like we're just going to oh, crush closer it. Closer <laughs> squared construction company. <laughs> oh. And then I was, I was right. The company blew up literally like <laughs> it just fell apart because you had two visionaries. And when I extracted my other visionary partner out of f fury of like, why aren't you doing all this stuff that should be done? Yeah. My wife was like, you shouldn't partner with people. She's like, partners are the worst. Yeah. And so when I met Cody, did you guys, did anybody not know this? Cody, my wife did not want Cody at my house. 
It was like a few months, just literally a few months after she had told you, like, yeah. never partner with anyone ever again. No partners. <laughs> da, 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 partners are the worst. But what she didn't know is she said she should have said, don't ever get another visionary as a partner. Yeah. It's one of the reasons why why Jamil and I can't be, ever be partners. Yeah. I can collaborate with him. I can yeah. love with him. You and I promote some of his stuff. Yeah. yeah. But like, we're the dream team, right? So I will go and collaborate with Jamil and go, how can I help? Mm -hmm. Or even like Dean Graziosi. Like Dean Graziosi is like, hey, will you help me promote a thing? I'm like, yeah, yeah. me and my team will help out. Yeah. But we're not partnering because mm -hmm. I already know the recipe. That's the recipe for disaster. <laughs> so going through that, you and I both had to learn this and Rocket Fuel was the book that I started reading right there. I was like, oh, oh my gosh. So good. Why didn't somebody tell me this five years ago? <laughs> it's the greatest thing ever. <laughs> the, the best man at my wedding, no longer him and I don't talk mm. because I read that book too late. Yeah. So that book was super helpful. Those books um, that you just talked about are super helpful. What about like masterminds? Was there one that you went to that you're like, and you don't have to name the name, yeah. but was there one you went to? You're like, man, this is lacking something. Yeah. So just, just another book I wanted to recommend too on that, you know, for integrators is Traction by Gina Wickman. So Rocket Fuel is way better for visionaries specifically to read, but integrators it's big should. big words. The words are really big. There's pictures. There's like, there's like pictures, videos and all that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but you know, the, that, that specific book, you know, Rocket Fuel is amazing, but Traction is like a thick, you know, a thick book that really goes into like, how do you build out your company's organization charts and accountability charts? And, you know, how do you put key performance indicators and metrics yeah. together for team members? So very great for integrators. And, you know, there's, there's a saying in, in that book, which is like, um, I have a, have a friend of mine that we like joke on this. His name's Jamie, but uh, he's an integrator for his uh, over at Grady's insurance agency. But He's like, there, there's a quote that says, visionaries know yourself and what is it? Know yourself and be blessed and integrators know thyself and be stressed. Mm. Like that's like the, <laughs> yeah, that's really good. <laughs> and I was like, that just hits my soul. That's yeah, really good. <laughs> you know? Cause I mean, I think, I think that's just like a tendency that I think in integrators have is like, cause we stress about the details. Like we want the details to be right. And I think even that alone has been something that I've had to like kind of let go of more of just like, there's always going to be fires yeah. constantly everywhere. And it's really just, you know, looking at what are the most important ones that need to be addressed and what yeah. are the areas that are going to have the biggest impact. Um, but going to the, the events, like, I mean, me and you've both been to a ton of different masterminds, like pretty much any mastermind op in an operation space that I've been able to find and pay for and go to, I've taken good insights and concepts and things, but there's not really like a, a place that like felt like a really great community that, you know, I could really like connect with other people like in similar. You could nerd out. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, you know, you like Quite to actually, literally. yeah, like to nerd out on those things, yeah. you know? And so there with, with the lack of that, it's really just been finding, you know, the other visionaries that have, you know, integrators that are doing great things and becoming friends with them. Yeah. It's interesting. Like if, if you look at, I'll point one out, but I won't say their name because he's a good friend of mine, but there's a gentleman in the real estate space that has a scaling mastermind. It's 60 grand a year. It's scaling, like how to scale. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, bro, isn't that a buzzword? Scale, yeah. scale. I'm like, like, how do you, you're a visionary. <laughs> why are you teaching this? And then he has nothing but visionary speaking on stage because they're the exciting people. Oh yeah. And so he had me speak one time at his mastermind. I'm like, what do you guys, what's the topic you guys are talking about this time? He was like scaling. I'm like, really? Like who in this room actually knows how to scale and build a business? Yeah. You might be able to create energy and activity and new products. Like that's the thing yeah. that visionaries are good at. Yeah. Like, let me come up with a new idea, a new brand, a new this, a new mm -hmm. way to promote, a new way to get people excited. Yeah. Let me close a private money lender. Let yeah. me bring in this, the, yeah. the, the, whatever. But I look at that. I'm like, there's nobody really in the industry that has something that's like, first and foremost, here's the integrator Academy. Secondly, if you're a visionary, this is where you come and recruit a partner. Yeah. Or hire an entrepreneur. Or hire an entrepreneur. How would an integrator academy help somebody that's like that? Maybe somebody that's like, I know I want a badass job running a whole department, maybe like a director of operations. Mm -hmm. I don't want to go to college for 85 years. Yeah. <laughs> is, is that what you're trying to say? Is like you, you might even help, help people identify and 
cultivate that talent in themselves so they can go get, land a badass job? A hundred percent. I think I think it's both. I think it's a it's going to be a place where people that maybe are you know they realize they are an int- uh, an integrator or visionaries that they you know need to send their operating partner that is an integrator that just needs to develop the skills like it's the place to go for them to be able to ascend and and level up their skills you know from everything around really there's going to be a big component around people because people are what actually drive a business like we can come up with all these great ideas and we can come up with these strategies but at the end of the day there's a person that needs to press the buttons there's a person that needs to do the things and Talk you know consistently customer, yeah right. service the customers make them happy take Balance care of the checkbook pay yes the bills yes pay the payroll taxes 100 percent. negotiate with the irs on a on a deal that we buy and that we have it, to call the irs and negotiate it, a yes. lien or whatever like somebody has to do these things. <laughs> Someone has to do all of that. So really, it's going to be a focus. You know, one of the main areas is going to be around people like, okay, how do you find talent? Mm. How do you, you know, actually interview talent properly when you onboard them? How do you do it the right way? How do you get them performing? What do you do when they're not performing? Oh, these, and, are, these are good ones that we all struggle. We, you and I both struggled with for like the first two or three years. But I now, every as you say these, I'm like, oh, Cody's figured this out. And we're still, you know, still working on getting out. it better. You know, every every day we're yeah, trying to get better. Yeah, but if I tell you, I go, if I ask you the question, how do you hire? somebody how do you find somebody how do you do this you're like oh we've got 97 percent of that down oh yeah for sure whereas for sure. five years ago it was the opposite oh yeah it was just like a warm body that wants to work come on in you, like <laughs> oh you breed lizards in your spare time no problem you're hired what do you want me to do i don't know we just got anything. we gotta do stuff we gotta do something Pick that's what i do now do get on the phone like okay yeah. so let's let's take let's take like kevin cho or alexis morgan for example right yeah two, two somewhat visionaries yeah kevin's gonna do probably a hundred sub two deals this year. Mm -hmm. Okay. Assignments primarily. It's making good money. Yeah. That's great. He'll make probably 500 to 700,000 this year. Mm -hmm. Now you can hire integration like transaction coordination. Yeah. Right. You can hire integration like a web developer Mm -hmm. or maybe social media management or those types of things. Yeah. But do you think because I, this is where the argument comes in. Brent Daniels does not believe in partners. Oh yeah, no, I know. I want to fight him, but then I look at his muscles. I'm like, okay, his muscles bigger than my head. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so I don't agree with him on that. Yeah, I think that everybody should have a partner because that's what's works for me. Yeah. So do you think a, a Kevin Cho would benefit from going out and getting an integrated partner at this point in his business? So I would say the biggest thing is like it's like what does someone want. Like that, that really is a big Meaning part like of it. the level of their ambition? Yes. Like the level of ambition is like, like one I'm of the- I'm happy where I'm at. I'm okay for the next 25 years being the guy that is relied on for everything. And I enjoy that. That's my passion. Mm-hmm. Or do you want to be the guy that's like, I want to start more businesses and learn new shit. And, yep. and it might not even be about more money. It's just more just conquering, just conquering, winning. Yeah. Okay, so you got to identify. So what you're saying is first thing is you got to identify what do you want? Yeah. Because the thing is, you know- Oftentimes, I was literally talking to my barber about this. He was like, you know, he brought in a partner on his barber shop so they could open more barber shops. And so mm. he's done a great job. Like his shop does a great. I mean, partner? Um, his, yeah, his partner's his integrator. Oh, okay, and cool. so so they're they're doing well there together. And the conversation that we were having, he's like, man, like, you know, I was making, you know, more money when I was doing it on my own. Mm. And I was like, well, you know, if you going down the path of partnering like you did, that means you should want three, four or five shops to make that actually make sense. Because he's like, now that I have this partner, I'm taking home half the money. And Mm -hmm. I'm like, that's just part of it. When you start the partnership is like, that's that's part of par for the course. But it's about where you want to go versus where you are right now. That's a whole interesting conversation right there because i get criticized right because from the outside perspective people like oh pace is the magic man he has Mm -hmm. all the ideas okay yeah all the all the businesses we have are either an idea or uh, something that came from my weird brain and then cody is basically the rest of it right but on the outside perspective what they see is the value is the person who came up with the idea and the the, da 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 so when i come to you and i go hey we're going to do this 50 50 Mm -hmm. I remember Jesse Burrell. Shout out. I love Jesse Burrell. When I first started Sub 2. Yeah. He was like, oh, yeah. your split is the worst thing ever. Yeah. You're the one that brings all the value to the table. I go, no. And what was interesting is my relationship with you had already started. And I was yeah. like, no, I know how valuable the integration is. Mm-hmm. And I also look at all the part- business partnerships that I, I look up to. And I'm like, Grant Cardone doesn't do this as a Grant Cardone. Yeah. It's like Grant Cardone and, and then everything else. Yeah. Like Grant is the G. 
and yeah. everybody else is the rant Cardone. Yeah, you know what I'm yeah, saying? yeah. <laughs> so um, it's the same thing with me as I was like, you don't know what you're talking about. Mm-hmm. I I need this thing. So it's like Gator or our media team or our real estate portfolio or start virtual or the plant guy or all the businesses that we're planning on buying. Mm-hmm. All of that stuff, I go, I don't care about my percentage. I've never, you and I have never really had a conversation about percentage. No. Our conversation is always like, what's next? Yeah. How do we do more? How do we do it bigger? How do we do it better? How do we do it more efficiently? How do we build better, you know, teams to do the things and be able right. to do more? And I think a lot of visionaries in the very beginning have are going to have that problem of like, well, I'm the one that came up with the idea. I'm the one that brings the energy. I'm the brings the culture. I'm the one that attracts blah, 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 blah. Mm-hmm. Okay. But how far are you going to go? Yeah. You're not going to go far. You're going to, you're going to be like my dad begging me for $10,000, you know, as I'm trying to go to a such and such, that Mm -hmm. is the guy that's like, I don't want to split stuff. Yeah. So Kevin Joe, while we have you in the room, do you want more or do you want to be the Kevin Joe that does a hundred deals by himself almost every year? I want more. I need more. Okay. He doesn't need more, Mm -hmm. but there (laughs) financially, you don't need more. There's that desire, that engine that's inside of you. Yeah. Like burning in the belly. Yeah. So, okay. So we know he wants more. Mm-hmm. So what, what would be now his next step? I mean, I'd say the next step in that is, you know, you have to really, really understand what it is that you're looking for in a partner. And I mean, for, for Kevin specifically, you know, it's, it's probably someone that could just take off all of like the minutia that he has to do day to day. And like in Kevin's particular position, it may not be bringing on a partner and like literally giving him 50% of what he's doing just because of at the stage that he's currently at. Right. But it might be, you know, they come on and they get 20% or 30%. And, you know, it's obviously he could work that out based on whatever he wants them to do. Yeah. But I think it's really understanding you know, and, and very integrator like, but like writing out on paper, like what are the things that I want to be doing in the business? Would that be called what you call the responsibility matrix? Yeah. Yeah. Essentially it's, you know, building a responsibility matrix and it's basically, you know, where you have all the areas of a business, every business is the same. There's always marketing. It's like, there has to be lead opportunities of whatever you're going to do. There has to be sales and some sort of sales occurring. There has to be once sales happens, fulfillment or operationally, you know, fulfilling a contract or, you know, whatever it is, the fix and flip construction operation part of it, like whatever that is. Then there's the finance and making sure that stuff's actually being paid and, you know, money is being managed the right way and really breaking down all of those into who, how can, how can people get a hold of a responsibility matrix? I would say, you know, going to can connect you have one. Do you have a, the drop box? Or yeah. Or yeah. If someone goes to connect with Cody.com, um, that, you know, we're going to have all the resources of anything on connect the with Cody.com. That's dope. Yeah. On the Alexis is running over there right now. She's like, I need a responsibility. <laughs> I don't even matrix. know if our team has it live yet, but it'll be there soon. Yeah. <laughs> So, um, all right. So he, you do a responsibility matrix. You mm-hmm. go, let, let me circle the things I want to do. I, that means I got to go find a partner that's going to do the rest of this. Yeah. Cause like, I, I, I would tell you that the number one thing that he's doing poorly mm-hmm. is the number one thing you and I were doing poorly, mm-hmm. which was actually money management. Mm-hmm. It's it, hard. It's so it's well, hard. I think the hardest part of money management is even though you and I were making 40, 50, $80,000 a month, whatever it was when we were primarily just doing wholesale. Yeah. The hardest part was we were just putting the money back in the business. Oh, yeah. We're just going to reinvest, just p- dump it back in, put it into another deal, put it into another deal. And more then being- marketing, <laughs> more, more of this. We're going to scale, Cody, scale. Cody calls me one day and he goes, hey, we haven't taken a paycheck in five months. <laughs> and I was like, but we're making all this money. <laughs> but we're making all this money. But then we started implementing um, financial models like profit first yeah, and yeah. <laughs> you start getting other people involved. And what was interesting is you will find out how much more money you really have when you're managing your money through a set of rules. Yes. Yeah. And I fought this right as yeah. a th- at the time I was 35, you were yeah. 20, you five, were 25. Yeah. yeah. No, 20, 26. I'm th- how much, how old are you right I'm now? 29 now. Okay. So I'm 11 years older than you. So you were, you were 26. I was yeah. no, 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 you're 24. I yes. was 35. Yes. Okay. So when we first met, so man, you'd only gotten your driver's license not too long before that. Holy crap. <laughs> I mean, you could see some of the videos where facial yeah, hair wasn't coming kid. in yet. Yeah, it was, it was very <laughs> patchy. So, um, I remember that conversation of like, well, we got to start paying ourselves. We got to put ourselves on an owner draw. Yeah, and yeah. like, well, 
where's that money going to come from? <laughs> it is magical when you follow a financial model. Yeah. You magically have more money than you had before you had the financial model. Yeah. Not that you're making more money, but it's actually going to the right places. The money has a job. Like that's that's the conversation that I, you know, that I'll have like when we were talking with plant guy, I'm like, Matthew, all of the money that comes into the company has a job. All of it has a job to do. Some of its job is to pay you as one of the owners. Some yeah. of its job is to pay vendors. To, to, you know, it's like the that's the the framework that, especially when it comes to finance and business, that people have to stop looking at is like that's my money in the account. I look at it as the money in the account for the businesses has a specific job to do. Some is maybe it's a reserve for something. Maybe it's you know money going towards buying a new building. Like we're yeah. allocating a you know good chunk every month towards that. It's like all of the money has a job that it's specific specifically outlined to do and it's not just all going into one account and just you know shooting by the hip the ostrich with his head in the sand is what a lot of people are doing with their finances would you agree with that oh yeah yeah the, especially as we look at more businesses it's like a train wreck i was like man like we have a lot of work to do to continue making ours better and i'm like wow like we're actually doing a pretty decent job like when i start looking at other businesses and i'm like yo what are you guys doing with this money what's crazy about the analogy of the ostrich with its head in the sand is that an ostrich is meant to run incredibly fast yeah but when an ostrich's head is stuck in the sand the ostrich is not doing what it's meant to do no so like when we don't and i you know all small business operators are like this I, there's people in this room that are like this kevin is specifically definitely like this <laughs> When you don't know what's going on with your money, where it's coming from, where it should be going, what job it has to do, because there's buckets, right? When when money comes into our company, there's these buckets and it's yeah. like, this bucket goes over to this job site, this bucket yeah. goes over to this job site, mm -hmm. whatever. When you don't watch that and you're just making money and spending it, you always have this feeling of, I'm not making enough money. Yeah. But when you then categorize it and you put it into its collective jobs and its responsibilities, you go, oh my gosh, I have an abundance of money. Yeah. And you actually feel like you can run way faster. Yeah. Kind of like you made a, a mention, like we're in the process of finding another larger building because we're outgrowing our current space. Yeah. And we, how much do we allocate every month to that? Uh, anywhere from 150 to 250,000 a month to a that month. right now. We yeah. allocate to a side. Yeah. We just don't for touch. That. Yeah. It's not our money. Yeah. And I remember when Ben, our CFO was like, well, how much do you want to put? In? I was like, all like everything. <laughs> I don't want to see it. I don't like the less money I see, the harder I work me personally. Yeah. And so it, it's nice. And then you tell me the other day, you're like, oh yeah, we have X amount of dollars saved up for our new building. I'm like, wow, how good does that feel? Yeah. It makes you just want to work so much harder. Yeah. Whereas you take over another company's finances and you under uncover everything. You go, oh my gosh, how are you guys not just like, Jump, like I want to develop cliff. an ulcer just like looking at it. Like, and I'm like, yo, like you guys got one checking account. Like what are, what's going on? Where's the other accounts? Oh no, this is the account. This is the company account. The company account pays their mortgage, their car payments. Yeah, their yeah, it's like insurance. everything is in it. They're like, I got to buy my wife lingerie. All right, Victoria's <laughs> Secret, swiping the card, right? All that kind of stuff. And it's interesting because as a business owner in the very beginning, you justify that because you don't know otherwise. Yeah, yeah. And you're like, well, I just need to make more money. Yeah. The problem is when you just make more money, what happens to your lifestyle? You just spend more money. It's you get lifestyle creep is one of the things that happens. And then the other thing is you you find you you always can make an excuse to spend money somewhere. Mm -hmm. And it's like it's like that of like a toothpaste, right? Like you have a brand new, you know, thick boy toothpaste. And it's like when you first, you know, that first squeeze, it's like, you know, you Easy. spill a little bit over you, you have extra versus at the very last, like you're on the last day of that toothpaste and you're like squeezing, twisting. You're like, I am not brushing my teeth today if I don't figure out how to get some juice out of this thing. Oh, I've even taken scissors on those shits and like, <laughs> it's like open it up. Cut it open and then I, I take my toothbrush and I dip it into the thing. And then I brush my teeth. So that's how I like to like have us look at the money that comes in. It's like, it's all in those accounts. And so it makes it always feel like we're at the squeezed end and it's like, okay, how can we continue to grow but also control you know, what costs are going out. And, and I think that's where, you know, we have a good yin and yang on that. Cause it's like, you know, I, you push and then I yeah. pull and it's like this good balance, you know? And it's like, sometimes, you know, well, I'm we'll aggressive. I'll, yeah. Sometimes I'll go, I, I, Cody's model is right. Cause it's I've proven. I'll just go <laughs> spend some of my own money. Cause I'm like, I'm not asking for permission. <laughs> I'm just going to go spend money and I'll spend money. It usually works out really, mm -hmm. really well. Yeah. But there is that yin and yang and I don't come back to you and I don't argue with you. I just go, I know this model works because it took us out of the model of the first year and a half, probably of like where the hell the money is. Yeah. It's just super inconsistent. It's like, okay, it's going into rentals, but like 
it would be nice to, you know, be able to have some money to go to sushi and like go yeah, and do actually, stuff. I remember year three, maybe it was year three. I sent you a text message. I was like, where the F is all the money? <laughs> and you're like, well, you took owner draws, you this, that, and the other. And I'm like, yeah, but like I, we made way more money than that. And you're like, yeah, but we also bought $5 million in real estate. We put $1.5 million in cash into that real estate. And I was like, okay, that's a great answer. Yeah. I don't care where, I, I care that it's just doing more. Yeah. Right. And as long as you have, um, I guess, optics on it. And yeah. that's the great thing about a good financial model is like yeah. you have the optics. Now Ben gives us three. Yeah. Points. The reporting now is like, I mean, you could see where everything is monthly graphs and all the fancy things. And it's just like, oh, like. That's where it is, and that's where it's being allocated. It's like yeah. it's great. Okay, so um, Cody Barton today. Okay, we you and I could talk for hours and hours. You're gonna yeah. do, you're gonna do a podcast with Abraham. Yeah, Abraham Gray, uh, good good friend. He's become a good brother to me, and um, he's such a great leader in our our communities. And he's got forty something businesses, so that'll be a great podcast oh, for yeah. us to do together. The question for me today is like, okay, Cody Barton, personal development was required to get to where you are now. Yeah relationships, skills, um, resources, books, masterminds, all these things, you had to overcome a lot of mindset issues. Yeah. You had to overcome all sorts of things like we all have. Yeah. What do you currently have on your plate that you're like, I need to work on this. I need to hire this. I need to get this off my plate because I'm actually not that good at this. What are some things? Because you're, like you're like a frog in a biology class. I want to dissect you. Okay. I want to know what the hell is going on. You're that's what integrators are to visionaries. We're like, yeah. how, what makes you who you are? <laughs> so what are some things that you're working on? Some things that, you know, like, I know I've got some mindset issues here. I know I got to go do this. I wish I wasn't doing this. Give me some ideas of what, and also give some integrators permission to have these types of problems. Yeah. So, um, just thinking of, cause it's something I was dealing with this week and it really drains me is, you know, we're working on hiring an HR, mm -hmm. you know, uh, generalist or an HR manager to be in house and to oversee all of the HR related issues. Cause a lot of times those things still end up hitting me. Like what? Give me one of those issues. <sighs> just one. You don't have to say anybody's name. Um, somebody <laughs> wants a raise. Somebody not even a, that, like not even complaint. that. It's just, you know, someone, someone feels that, you know, Susie and, you know, Sally aren't getting along and it's like, they're territorial about something in the office space or they're upset about, you know, oh, they, they're trying to make this change in the CRM or they're trying to make this change in, you know, our, our email software. So your HR director would essentially block you from having to deal with that crap. Yes. Yes. Cause you know, it comes to me and then it's like, I play, you know, grown up babysitter. Isn't it amazing that somebody actually wants to do that job? I am like, bless their heart, whoever this person's going to be. But you know, like we have, we have some good HR uh, resources in our collective yeah. companies. Mm -hmm. And I look at them like Pam. Yeah. I'm like, thank, who are you? How did you, who, who birthed you? Yeah. Yeah. She's I would great. never want to do that job, but she does it so well. Yeah. Okay. So HR, what's more? Yeah. So, so HR, definitely a big one. Um, another area is technology. I mean, I mean, you see it like the, the, one of the biggest grobbles I know that you have is just like, dude, like what's going on with our websites. Mm -hmm. And the, you know, like we constantly have issues with our technology and CRMs and like all of those things. And so I, one of the hires that I'm actually interviewing, um, other, uh, business owners, they're like heads of technology or their CTO. Mm -hmm. So I can get better insight into like who we need to hire and what they do and what they do and what I should be looking for. Cause I don't know how to interview someone for a role that I don't understand. And so that's one of the roles that imagine were, if you did that four years ago, no, you didn't mm -hmm. even know to do that. No, no. It was like, hold on, let me hire incorrectly 12 times. Yeah. Oh, Pace found some guy off the street out of a, uh, out of the gutter. Perfect. Yeah, he has a computer him. and he's as an Android. So he's probably a tech probably, guy. Okay. Yeah. yeah. He's probably, if he, he has an Android, he's a, he's a, he's a tech guy. Ah, so good. So you, you Androiders, y'all don't know shit about it, the technology. You're just diehard fans. You're just like, I'm going to die on this hill. Um, okay. So, yeah, and I have an I have a not a qualm, but more of like I, I have know. grovels myself because I'm just like I just need the thing to work, yeah. and we pay all these consultants and like, you know web people, working? and then they're like, oh yeah, well you know if, yeah it's not working anymore because you know the this platform changed their thing, so yeah that's why it's broken. I'm like, but you still charge me, but now I gotta pay to get it fixed again, you know. So yeah. that's I just want to have in house all of that technology <laughs> stuff a, handled. I, made a text, I sent a text message to you a couple of weeks ago. I was like. We need a full-time AI specialist. <laughs> I'm like, 
<laughs> and you're like, dude, I just need somebody to build a website. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like AI people are AI is taking over the whole world and you're probably like dude people like if our competitors are dealing with the same stuff that we're dealing with yeah there's a lot of years away and yeah and so that that's a big area and I know people will probably end up reaching out like I could help you guys with your website no you can't because then they're gonna they're gonna take 17 weeks to make an update on it and you know we're gonna be like okay well we have these nine websites to do and we need them all done today and yeah they're you know, like oh so. i know wordpress i can help you build a website great Thank yeah you so much so I'm sure you're great so that's you know that's that's an area um and then so you know i'd say it's a mindset is like i have to continuously just be you know strengthening my callousness of you know letting go of certain people mm -hmm. faster is a, is definitely a thing because i mean letting I, go of employees or letting go of like letting go of employees yeah okay yeah, yeah. certain people that aren't working out you know well, i try to see the best in them there's you a know? delicate balance too yes like as the as the person that's in charge of those things right and i help create culture and there's things that i bring to the table in that regard but i'm not managing people yeah and so for you you not only have to let people go but you also have to know the fine line of like you need a coaching moment right now yeah and you could ultimately become one of our greatest players yeah and so like that's a mindset thing you have to work on all the time yeah 100 percent. and it's like so it's like trying to that delicate dance with team members of like trying to coach them up but you know at what point it's like okay we just need to coach them out and they need to move on somewhere else you know so that's definitely coach them up versus coaching them out yeah so that's 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 an area that's you know i'm, I'm actively working on right now um that's a mindset thing yeah yeah a mindset because i i just feel bad for people i mean we both are in that camp i know Bleeding that heart. you're worse than i am in that of like that's you, why i just have to stay away from people. yeah and that's and it's great and i love them so much yeah and i care but you know i'll i'll you know remove them a little bit sooner yeah. um now but you know like that's that's an area um you know the, the raise thing since we got ben it's great because all departments have budgets and it's like that department's budget is this for raises and it's like if someone wants to ask, I'm like, sounds like you got to talk to your manager because your manager has the budget from Ben. I don't, I'm not the guy. <laughs> and meanwhile, you're the owner. It's, uh. you know, what's interesting is like all the things that we deal with and I'm, I want to keep going down this th train of thought, but just making a comment about, about this. When you're a small business owner, you're like, I'm going to keep it small mm -hmm. and just keep it simple and easy. Yeah. It gets easier the bigger you get. Yeah. Because now you can point to a department and go, they actually have a budget I'm not involved in. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm like, I don't, I don't know. Like that's, they, they put it together. I'm not yeah. the one to ask anymore. Right. So I'm, I'm loving that, that, that part's great. And you know, so that, that's, that's an area I would say on, you know, on the business front, I think, um, I think, and, and I'd love to hear your thoughts on this too. Like my risk tolerance was like really strict, you know, stressed like all the time. I feel like I've gotten more You've risk adverse, you know, a like, great <laughs> job. you've done feeling such more a great comfortable job. with five, that five years ago, four years ago, three years ago. I don't, I tease you about it, like in our mastermind, I'll tease you because it's funny. Yeah. But I knew when like I brought the plant guy to the table, I knew you were going to say yes to it. Mm -hmm. Two years ago, you'd be like, no, go do yeah. it with somebody else. I'm not doing this with you. Mm -hmm. Right now you're like, no, let's do it. And let's go build a whole C-suite so we can go take on more of these things. Yeah. Yeah. But different, a different Cody exists today that existed 36 months ago yeah and it's and i think a lot of it's too is now having the bin that gives the financial confidence of like i know what's going on with the funds to like where that could be allocated and what burns are on different areas of lines of business or different companies and so it's like having that confidence definitely helps yeah, and it's like hey well, cody why are you not driving the car fast enough you're like because i have no rear view mirror and i have no mirror side mirrors yeah <laughs> now all of a sudden you're driving way faster i'm like dude what's the difference the car's the same no well i have mirrors now I yeah. know where I'm going. I know what's on my sides. I know what's mm -hmm. happening in front of me, in front of me and in back of me. So Ben really has been the the additional optics. Yeah. So that's that's been extremely helpful. And then I would say so that's on on the business side. What some of those challenges are? HR, technology, um, you know, are, are big ones. But I guess on on the personal side, then it's like increasing my you know, obviously like I'm buying a new house right now. And like, that was something that I've been pushing you know, on you this, yeah. for this for two years. I'm like, you're a rich mother freaker, dude. What are you, what are you talking about? Go buy the biggest ass house ever. And you're like, no, I'm going to wait. I'm like, come on dog. And now, uh, you live in, you're going to live in a gated community in 30 days. Yeah. A mile North of you. That's so dope. That's so dope. Now I'm going to teach my kids how to toilet paper at your house all the time. It's going to be sick. But that, that was a thing that, you know, it's like, we all have that, that financial thermostat and it's like going, you know, go like business wise, it's I'm seeing, you know, 
payroll is over half a million dollars a month for us. And it's like, I don't bat an eye at that. But when I look at like, oh, like I'm going to have my taking more care of yourself. Yeah. Taking care of myself. I'm like, no, like I don't, I don't want to throw more personal expenses on myself. And so like, yeah. that's, that's an area that I'm still I, working on. I overcame personally. that. I overcame that problem. I was the exact same way. I met a guy named Steve, um, probably when I was about your the age I met you is like 24 mm-hmm. ish. And I met this guy and he said, your environment will determine how much money you make. And mm-hmm. I was like, you're so full of it. And I was trying to convince him we were partners and I was trying to convince him, let's go into this $500 a month rental um, for our office, like a suite inside of a suite. And then you have to yeah. open up a rat cage to go into. <laughs> um, and then magically there was an office in there. And it was 500 bucks a month. Yeah. He goes, no, we're going to find a place. that's $3,800 a month. Mm-hmm. We don't have thirty eight hundred dollars. It goes the thirty eight thirty eight hundred dollars a month will help us make thirty eight hundred dollars. I'm like, he goes, trust me. He's fifty years old, so he's much older than me, twenty five years older than me. And you know the buildings on Tempe Town Lake, that yep. KPMG building. Yep, yep. He made me go get an office in that building. Mm-hmm. And he goes, They're sick. How do you feel? And I was like, I feel like a million dollars. And he goes, I told you. Yeah. And so like your environment, I went through that. So now by the time I met you, I was pushing on that button really hard. And, um, (laughs) you know, like when we got our office, everything elevated. Yeah. Oh, hundred percent. I mean, it was like game changer, game changer. Same thing with your environment. Like you went from where you were in your condo Mm -hmm. to then to the next house you're in to then the penthouse in freaking downtown Phoenix. Yeah. Everything elevated around you. Yeah. And then now you're in the house you're in now, which is decked out and, and dope, but it's just not you yet. Yeah, no. Like it was a good house. It was a good stepping stone. Yeah. But now this house is you. Yeah, 100%. And you're going to walk into like, I'm full Cody mode right now. Yeah, it's going to feel different for sure. It already does. You don't yeah, even there it's, it's, yeah, just like, I mean, yeah, it's, it's ridiculous. Like imagine going from Albuquerque, New Mexico to anywhere in Arizona. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> Dan Quijano's with us, guys. So we had to t- jab him just a little bit. <laughs> okay, so in the, on the personal side, there's that. What el- what other things on the personal side are you working on outside of work? Is it are you working? Because there was a mo- there was a moment where you went vegeta- vegan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you got skinny, dude. Yeah, like, I got- was too skinny. When like, a medium like, shirt yeah. started feeling too big on me, that's when that was done. I was like, I am not doing this. You anymore. were withering away, <laughs> and you're like, okay, I'm done with this. Yeah. Then, then you know. As we've built our businesses, you know, there's influxes in the, my health, your health, yeah, et cetera. Yeah, little roller coasters. Are you in a phase right now where you're like, I'm hyper focused on something in the, in that regard? Yeah, I mean, I've been with a, a personal trainer for over a year now, and it's like every week. It's you know, I, I don't want to make the time for it, but it's just like it's on my calendar, so I have to be there. And it's and that's that's a super helpful thing because I could go work out on my own, but I'll find a hundred reasons of other things more important to not do it. So that's why I have a trainer because it's like, well, at least I'm accountable. I need to show up for him because like it's, you know, I want to honor his time that, you know, I'm paying him and showing up. And so that area um, I've been significantly better on this this year. But, you know, as as an entrepreneur, you know, it's like you have those ebbs and flows of stress and, yeah. and things and it, you know, it affects your body so much. It does. And and these are the things that people are like, I want to be an entrepreneur. So my life is easier than my nine to five job. <laughs> I'm like, what are you talking about? You are going to stress out. You're going to go through weight changes. You're going to go through yeah. things where your business demands 18 hours a day sometimes. Yeah. Literally, there are days where you and I have worked from six o'clock in the morning until the next day at like sometimes 10 PM. Yeah. Right. Midnight, get back up at six o'clock. You're back at it. Right. Mm-hmm. Based on whatever it is that you're doing, travel around the country, go to this, meet this person, try and convince this person to come into this and do this. Mm-hmm. It's never ending all the time, tons and tons of things. So I, I tell people it's actually easier to get big mm-hmm. because now you can start t- saying, that's not my job. Yep. That's not my job. Yep. And as I've watched you say, that's not my job. That's not my job. That's not my job. Our companies have all elevated, which allow for more opportunities. Yep. So last part of this that I think we should go over, is like, speaking of opportunities, what are the things you're excited about in the future in terms of acquisition? Is it, Hey, we're going to go, we're going to, you know, re rebuild or change the way that our real estate portfolio is being managed. Is it, Hey, we're building a big, um, C-suite to go and attack companies that are failing. Mm-hmm. What is it that you are super excited about right now? 
Yeah, I would, I would say, you know, really, you know, on the real estate side, <clears throat> you know, kind of streamlining our operations a little bit, just as far as acquiring deals more yeah. seamlessly, where I could, you know, have less involvement in it, but just like have the team really turning away on just like managing the properties. Cause that's really the biggest thing for us now yeah, is just like the management. Ben, like Ben even coming through and identifying, like he goes through the whole schedule of real estate owners. Mm -hmm. Like, Hey, just so you know, there's a male strip club being ran in this house and there's a this and there's a that and a blah. <laughs> Like literally, these are real things that are happening. And I'm like, oh, that's super interesting. Like even Ben adding another layer of yeah. management above the manager, above yeah. the manager type of thing. So streamlining that, what about on the business? Yeah, on, on the business side, you know, acquiring businesses, you know, within, you know, our established buy box where obviously we're in Arizona, we have a lot of our properties here, you know, getting business, you know, plumbing businesses, maybe an electric, uh, electrical business, handyman businesses, like businesses that we can plug into things that we're already doing in Arizona. I'm super excited about. And now just, you know, I mean, we've been say, putting, we put money aside every month for business buying. And I just look at that and I'm like, we need to place this cash into new businesses. And so I would say that that's a, that's a really big area that I'm excited about because it, it also kind of scratches the itch of like, even though I am who I am, I do have the squirrel syndrome a little bit of like, I like working on different things. Like, making well, you know personal you know every time you work on something new it's personal development yeah i feel like i get to learn and stretch and like figure out a new way to do something or figure out ways to work through problems and so you know right now that we're building out that c-suite team where we have you know ben as our cfo and you know i mean this guy's adriana. freaking yeah and adriana for the the operational side and you know i i think we really only need maybe one really strong marketing person. She has pretty good uh, marketing skills as well. But, you know, I think if we had one really strong like sales and marketing person on our C-suite to be able to go and attack these businesses. So would that be, would that be a director of sales? I would say probably because I think, you know, between that and Adriana that she has skill sets in marketing, I think that we would be able to be well-rounded enough to be able to go in. And, and what's really fun right now is, you know, we're building basically the template process of how we go into a business. Like yeah. when we went to see the plant guy, like we, you know, we're, we're building this out where every business we go into, we have basically an audit of, we go in and we look at these you know, 17 things in marketing, these things in sales, these things in operations, these things in finance. And each person on our team is able to go and peel those things back and then prioritize based on the biggest impactor and driver of revenue, which things we're going to attack first. It's kind of like if um, you're an uh, auto mechanic and an F-150 comes in and you know all the things to do on the F-150, the next F-150 comes in is a different color. Yeah, it's still, it's still the same. It's, it yeah. has a different skin, but it's yeah. all the same, right? Yep. And even if there's some little things like, oh, it's a dually or it's a four by four, like there might be little tweaks here and there. Yeah. But the majority of it, 99.9% .9 of it is like, this is a checklist. 100%. And so you have a, a, a C-suite that we're creating that comes in and goes, let's go through this checklist, yep. divide and conquer, Yep. next one, next one, et cetera. Okay, mm -hmm. so buy box, um, you, you alluded to this for a minute, but it's like, Plumbing, HVAC, blah, blah, blah. Things that we can plug in immediately. Service-based businesses. Yeah, service. Outside of Arizona? Arizona right now. I, I want us to really get strong foundation for service-based businesses in Arizona so we can cross-sell and through the audience that we have and to service all of our freaking properties that we pay a bunch of money to all yeah. these other people to service. And so that, you know, that's where we want to focus there. Open to online businesses, you know, like we've talked about wanting to buy like a personal credit repair business. You know, yeah. it's like there there's some businesses that could be online that would be, you know, maybe great additions Insurance to what we're doing. Business. Insurance, you know, like there's... Things that can be di digital. If it's a physical business that needs a serviceman to go there, yeah. Yes, Arizona. Physical. Yeah. If we, if it's a digital thing, like, Hey, we can do bookkeeping, mm -hmm. CPA firm, mm -hmm. credit repair. Credit repair um, that's a good one. Yeah. Locally here. I mean, property management business would be great to be oh, able to yes. buy. Yes. Yes. Give me a property management company. <laughs> yes. That'd be so great. Alexis, are you hearing all this? Yeah, she's hearing. She's, <laughs> she's taking notes. We'll close up after this question. We just had a business that we basically turned down as a zero down business. Yeah. Right. And there's this new thing that we're, you and I are putting together currently for the sub two community because it's, we're trying to just teach people how to go out and find these things so we can do more business buying with them. We've got this cool little fun thing called zero down. And in this, we get a business just recently mm -hmm. brought to us that is a zero down deal. Yep. Yep. But we turned down the deal. Mm -hmm. Okay. Originally, it was like, eh, the revenue is not big enough. Yeah. 
then there were some other things that really kind of triggered some red flags. Mm -hmm. Not big red flags. Like anybody no. else would have. I was telling yeah. Ingrid actually the other day. Ingrid's here now. I told Ingrid, I'm like, that actually, if you think about it, Ingrid would have crushed that business. Right. Yeah. And that business is making 25 grand a month. Yeah. Net. Yeah. Right. Why did we turn it down? What were some of the red flags you turned down? Well, so I mean, and talk about what maybe talk about what kind of business it is and then talk about why we turned it down. So it's a it's a niche construction business, you know, specializing in, you know, these are they're typically going to be doing work in million dollar plus homes. Yeah, it's like, they're stuff. Building like this stuff type of like stuff. This, yeah, they're doing like fireplace designs and yes. bunk beds and cool things like that. Yeah. So it's locally in Arizona, which was a positive. But, you know, where they do that, like we look at our portfolio of properties that we have in Arizona and all of our friends. We're not spending money on this stuff. No. We're, we're like we have a trailer in Apache Junction that like that we need someone that's going to go pull rats out of like a toilet yeah, or something yeah, like exactly. that. You know, it's like that's <laughs> those are the oh, while I'm here do, pulling this rat out, you want me to build a nice little fireplace design? The, yeah, that the, the fireplace design is going to be more than the trailer. You yeah. know, it's like yeah. so so kind of the niche wasn't exactly in alignment. But one of the other areas that we weren't big fans of was there wasn't going to be an operating team in place that, you know, if we acquired it, it's like, cool, but now we have to go and build the team to do Who all of it. Who is going to do this? Yeah. And, and, and so when looking at that, you know, I think it could be a good opportunity for someone else that's like excited to step in and do it themselves. For a year. Maybe. For a year and do all of that. But for us, the C-suite team that we're building to do this with these businesses, they're not cheap. These are six figure, like yeah. expensive six figure positions. And I look at it and I'm like, just in our payroll annually, like this business isn't that exciting because of the resources we're going to have to allocate to make this business yeah. more successful. And so really we want, you know, the reason we decided to go against it was, you know, the not having the right operations in place from day one where we could just go and mentor and kind of, you know, help mold the team kind that's of, already in like place. Kind of like what we're doing with the plan. Guys. Yeah, exactly. It's like that works way better where it's like there's someone that's driving the operation daily and there's a team that's excited to build daily and we could come in and bring the expertise to make things just more efficient in all of those different areas so that they could be more profitable, more efficient and all of that. And so like that's kind of more the model that we want to be able to go after and, you know, be able to allocate the this you know expensive team that we that we put together that they're super talented into businesses that we could see a bigger lift you know that's right. that's the biggest thing so somebody like an ingrid who's like hey look i actually could probably jump into this yeah and i could run this business make 25 grand a month they're paying themselves and making 25 grand a month there is i think it was like 1.2 million last year in revenue and then i think the total you know, profit plus owner distributions are around somewhere between 250 and 300. Okay. Owner distributions. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. Okay. Got it. So they're netting like 20%. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Got it. And that's after, so here's a couple of things that we were excited about. We were like, oh, they have an existing construction license. Yes. We can leverage that and grow other things off of it. But mm -hmm. then when she came back to us and she was like, hey, I want to charge you guys a monthly fee for ha to like use keeping it. our in or like, why would I buy the business if the if the freaking license was not included? Yeah. So that started becoming a red flag. They yeah. started changing things on us. And so the smartest thing to do is just pull back. Yeah. And go, sorry, it's not a good fit for us. Buy. They might even come back to us at some point. But the amount of time, energy, and resources we would have to allocate to, to that, we could allocate somewhere else, like maybe this plumbing business mm -hmm. or a plumbing business if this one doesn't work out that has an easier lift. Yes. Maybe people that are key personnel that are like- That are there already. Just mentor me. Tell me how to manage the finances. Yes, yes. Because we're or just take it off my money. plate and just go and do the thing. Right, right. Hundred percent. What a fun, what a fun life, huh? It is. It's an adventure every day. Adventure every day. <laughs> it's um, you know, I was on this Bigger Pockets podcast this morning and just talking to them, and this girl comes on and asks a question, and every question she was talking about was like, "I'm going to manage everything myself. I'm going to do everything myself, and I'm going to go." I'm like, "How long is that going to last?" Mm -hmm. Right. Like how much fun is it to play with a set of Legos by yourself? One. Yeah. Yeah. Like it's way more fun with a partner. Yeah. I have a lot more fun, you know, pushing each other on both our things and challenging each other um, on our stuff. It's a lot more fun to have a buddy, a, mm -hmm. a, a companion, yeah. so to speak. And then on top of it, it's also more fun to go out and realize that you're impacting people by hiring so many people. Yeah. Yeah. Like, our collective companies are employing probably five, 600 people. Yeah. It's insane. Mm hmm. It's insane to think of like five years what we've been able to accomplish. Yeah, it's really it's really cool. Well, because we have a good dynamic. Mm -hmm. And um, anyway, so 
I don't know when this integrator Academy is coming out, but I think it, it's definitely something that, um, you got to launch soon. Yeah. You, how can people connect on that? So the connect best thing, Cody? yeah. So either connect with Cody.com or there's actually people could go to integrator Academy.io mm -hmm. and they can, you know, get more information on when that's going to be coming out on there as is well. Is there going to be a point where a pace morby can go into that integrator Academy.io mm -hmm. and go, I don't want to do any of this education. Mm -hmm. I just want to recruit a, an integrator to come and partner with me. hundred percent. I mean, that's one of the things that I want to be able to do in there is, you know, offer people that they go through the content in there and they have to prove some competencies and maybe get like some sort of certificate where they could say, Hey, I've learned these competencies. I've shown that I've been able to do these things and that they could be on like a vetted list of people that, visionaries can go and find and hire and place those people into the business. Like I want to, I want to like, why is this not out right now? It would change the game. Yeah. And that's, that's what it, and that's just been kind of one of those things where, I mean, obviously we've talked about, it's like this podcast, it's like, I just haven't been able to allocate the time to it because of all of the things that have to be done to build all of this. Yeah. And, you know, now where it's coming more to the point of like, well, you know, we're going to need more integrators and entrepreneurs in the businesses that we buy and build. And, you know, so why not show other people how to do it along the way? You know, I, sh I should text Dan Fleischman and you guys have met and all that, but mm -hmm. I should tell you, I should go, Hey Dan, anytime you make a new connection with these visionaries mm -hmm. and you're connecting one visionary to another visionary to do a podcast, can you think of Cody? Every single time you do that and say, can you connect Cody with every one of their integrators? Yeah, that would be great. <laughs> because like, think about integrate interviewing Dan Fleischman. Yeah. That's cool. But yeah. Dan Fleischman's brother, Leon, who that's does doing all, all the things, nobody gets to talk to that guy. Yeah. No one knows who he is probably. I nobody mean, similar in my way with certain, you know, areas, right? Yeah. I, I was, um, up in a uh, community camp. That was such a fun event we did last a uh, couple of weeks ago. And I'm talking to Brian Norton right mm -hmm. ultra visionary and he's like hey you know i got this um i got the I, I love what you guys are doing with buying businesses and like this is so cool I, I got some you know a business that we're buying let me let me hear your thoughts on the structure and he goes all right so I, we found this company it's an online company they have their their revenue is 600 million dollars a year and we're buying this business with basically no money out of pocket I'm like <laughs> Did you just say $600 million a year? He goes, yeah, I think in my first year of owning this, the way I've structured it is I'll take home like 20, $21 million. And I'm like, who's going to run them? And he points over to his kitchen and he goes, my two integrators, they're right there. <laughs> and I walk over there and I go, will you let my partner Cody interview you? And they're like, do we, <laughs> do we have to come into the sunlight? <laughs> But so I was texting with Brian Norton and he's like, Hey, let's fly. Like either you and Cody fly up to Montana for a couple of days yeah. and hang out with us on the farm or I'll fly down to you and I'll bring my integrators and we'll talk about like, how can we collaborate? How can we find businesses for each other since we're both on the hunt? And uh, he texted me this morning. He's like, when can we do this? Yeah. So um, guys, make sure that you're liking and subscribing this. Make sure that you guys are going down below. Subscribe. If you guys have a visionary that you're really impressed with, like an Alex Ramosi. Alex Ramosi does not do the thing. Mm. Okay. Santa Claus does not make the toys. Okay. Uh, Alex Ramosi is Santa Claus. He's not making the toys, the stuff behind the scenes, him and Layla, they're not making the things happen. Mm. Um, same thing with Dean Graziosi and Tony Robbins and all these people that are like prolific figures on the front yeah. end. Make a comment of who, who your favorite people are. Mel Robbins, right? Vina Jetty, whoever it is that you're impressed by, make a comment down below. Cody will not interview them. He'll go and interview their integrators and go, what does the back end look like? Yeah. The front looks really nice, but I want to see that booty. Yeah. I want to see that back end. <laughs> I want I want to see that back end. Okay. Make sure you subscribe, share this with a friend. If you guys got value, make sure you take the link, go and text a friend and go, this was super helpful. Or maybe even text your partner. If you and I watched this five years ago, this would have helped us. Oh yeah. I mean, a hundred percent. Like I, it's a lot of things that we just beat our head against the wall through and now we know better but that's that's why we do the things we do is to help other people not have to do that yeah we we had for a while we had a a funny thing in our um acquisition company it's probably four years ago three years ago and the team would get a contract and i would just go instead of saying congratulations i go hashtag more yeah more yeah more and they're like wait we're not celebrating i'll go you celebrate on the next deal <laughs>
<laughs> celebrate on the next deal. So the goal of any business is always more. <laughs> yeah. Right. And if we would have known what we know now, five years ago, we could have done probably twice as much, yeah. maybe three times as much. Yeah. We would have still had to gone through some trial by fire. Yeah. Still hired bad people and learned some of these things, but we would have been further along. Do we care about the money? No, we care about personal development, growing and becoming. Yeah. Again, I don't care about the billion dollars that you and I will both be worth. I care about being worthy of a billion dollars. Yeah, it's the person that you become on the way to the journey through the process, you know? Yeah, I don't. I just don't want to become that person at 97 years old. I want no. to become that person at 62. Yeah, yeah. That's it. So shout out Cody Barton. Great podcast. We'll see you on the next one. We'll see you in the next episode.